from the ROV standpoint, safety factors through the roof and it speeds our process up. And at the end of the day for the families, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring closure for them. So anything that we can do to make it safer, faster, quicker, uh, easier for the groups, uh, it's definitely a plus. Hi there, my name is Carter Sinclair and I'm the account executive who looks after the public safety industry here at Deep Trekker. Over my four years with the company, I've been working with public safety dive teams from fire rescue departments, sheriff's offices, police departments, Coast Guard and military from Canada, United States and the rest of the world. These teams have a huge variety of applications, but they're usually the ones on the front lines to bring both evidence as well as lost souls back home. It's a horrible situation we can find ourselves in when somebody might be lost at sea or lost in a lake. And these teams are putting themselves on the line to bring that family some closure and bring that person home safely. These dives can be incredibly risky. We are seeing low temperatures, high current, low visibility. These are just a couple of the hurdles that these teams are putting themselves in the lineup. And it can be very risky for these divers. Deep Trekker makes underwater ROVs, which are meant to mitigate the risk these divers face, make things much more efficient and effective, and make diving operations significantly safer. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been traveling and visiting some of our current customers who have been using our ROVs for a number of years and learning a little bit more about how ROVs have impacted their diving operations. We're gonna be speaking with some customers like Charlotte Fire Rescue, High Point Fire Department, as well as Shane Seagroves, who is an independent consultant who works with teams like this to implement new technologies like sonar, ROV systems, and aerial drones. We're going to be talking about how their search process was done prior to the implementation of Deep Trekkers ROVs and how things have changed now that they've been using them for a number of years and the impact it's had not just on the team as a whole, but each individual as part of that team. When you start having to splash divers from multiple high interest points in the water, you're limited to how long the divers can stay on the bottom to how much personnel you have on scene. By introducing the ROV into that process, you're only limited to battery life. Before we talk about how teams are utilizing this equipment now, I think it's important to highlight how teams have done things in the past and how many teams are still operating this very day. A public safety diving team is more than likely going to be deploying a boat with either a towable or a hull mounted side scan sonar. The purpose of that piece of equipment is to scan the bottom of the lake to look for anomalies, things that shouldn't be there. In many cases, that could just be a log. It could be a rock formation. It could be some other structure on the bottom of that lake bed. And oftentimes, most of the anomalies that are found on a sonar system are not the target that they're looking for. To verify those targets, many teams are deploying divers through a process called bounce diving. This process involves the diver going to depths up to 60 feet rapidly and repeatedly, oftentimes with as little as 10 to 15 minutes of bottom time. This can be incredibly risky for divers. You don't know what that target is on the bottom. It could be a huge entanglement hazard for that diver. Another common technique we see is a process which is called dragging. So rather than deploying a diver through that bounce diving process, they're deploying hooks off the back of the boat and dragging these hooks in order to hopefully latch on to whatever that anomaly is and then bring it to the surface. Rather than deploying divers through bounce diving or deploying hooks in the hope of dragging that victim, Deep Tracker ROVs can be deployed really rapidly to verify each one of those anomalies on that bottom of the body of water. Using our onboard imaging sonars, we're able to quickly navigate and identify each anomaly. And using our onboard 4K camera or our higher frequency sonar systems, we're able to get a positive confirmation on what that target is. We are also able to use our onboard grabber to latch onto the victim or something nearby in order to lock in that target. Teams then have the decision to deploy divers and do a diver-based recovery, or using our ROV system, a fully remote recovery is able for victims up to 300 pounds. Having an ROV in the water and completely eliminating that bounce diving process makes things much more efficient and effective, but significantly safer for all those divers involved. And when we take that a step further and are able to do a fully remote recovery, the impact can be astronomical. 
In addition to large area searches, which we just discussed, small area searches are very common as well. Take the case where a car is driven off of here. Normally we'd be deploying divers in without any situational awareness on the environment, the vehicle's condition, as well as whether somebody was inside or not. Being able to deploy an ROV very quickly and get that information to that dive team can make a significant impact. We're able to get to the bottom, locate the target in its exact position, and whether somebody may or may not be inside, as well as any additional hazards. So when a diver goes into the water, that operation is gonna be inherently safer. We used to, when we'd get a call, we'd go out to the site that we were supposed to go to and you'd have a backup diver, a primary diver, and a 90% diver, so that would give you three personnel to have to suit up and get ready to go into the water. We would put the tow fish in, they would get a hit on the tow fish, and we would see the image, they would drop a cage, so we'd drop a diver, a backup diver. With the ROV, being that it has a visual camera as well as a sonar, we can actually see what it is, which means that we only have to drop one diver with a backup diver in. So we have been running a dive program for a number of years now. We have about 80 plus divers, public safety divers, and we run a mix of rescue and recovery operations. And we also use a mixture of sonar across different boat platforms. And we will start getting waypoints and once we get those points identified, we will use the ROV to identify those points and identify the targets and then make the recovery if possible. To be honest with you, uh, probably 50% of the recoveries we've done with the ROV, we were actually able to see the victim from the surface with the ROV by tilting down and using the sonar to pick that target up and then we just work our way to the target. So speed, speed, speed. In the past, it was strictly boat operated sonar and then it was public safety divers making sweeps through water. And we've got really brackish water in this area. And so most of our divers were searching almost virtually blind. The implementation of the ROV now has allowed us to introduce a robotic into the water and not have to splash a diver. Honestly, the safety aspect was the catalyst for the purchase of a robotic to supplement our divers. Not that we're getting away from dive specifically, but it was to help the situations where we felt like we could introduce robotics instead of a diver to make it safer for those firefighters and limit the amount of time that we were utilizing that as opposed to diving. So just for example, the first year that we bought the Deep Tracker, we recovered eight victims from underwater. And so that was eight times we never had to put one of our firefighters in the water. If you only have to go down one time, which is what the deep trekker allows us to do because we have a visual on our target, we know exactly what we're going after. We go down one time, we execute the recovery or the rescue, and then we're back up to the surface, and that's it. Shortly after the interview clips you've seen with High Point Fire Department on Blues Lake, there was a missing boater who disappeared on Christmas Eve. Stokes County Emergency Management was called out to locate and recover the missing boater. By using our Pivot ROV system, Stokes County Emergency Management was able to both recover the missing boater as well as his craft without the need of ever having to splash a diver. We 100% were able to eliminate any risk to divers entering the water and significantly speed up recovery times. On the day of the boater recovery, they left the dock, scanned the area, found the anomaly, and recovered that boat, and were back on the dock within an hour of deployment. So safety is a huge part, but being able to get that victim and the evidence in a timely manner makes a big impact for the families, as well as the emergency teams who are putting themselves in harm's way to do these kind of operations. We're now here at one of Deep Trekker's lake testing facilities, and I'm going to be quickly running you through some of our different ROVs we're often deploying for search and recovery operations, and some of the different options that might impact your team. So we have three swimming vehicles here at Deep Trekker, the first of which is our DTG-3 here on my left. As you can see, this is a very small, portable system. It fits inside this one Pelican carrying case and can be set up and deployed in just a couple of seconds and is a really amazing tool for small inland lakes with not a lot of current. Now, moving on to our pivot here, this is a big step up in terms of capabilities. It has a suite more of intelligence, autonomy, and can have advanced attachments like USB-L positioning and DVL station holding. The revolution here on my right is our most powerful ROV. This deals with the most amount of current and can have the most attachments put on board. Now, like we've been talking about, Deep Trekker is really known for their versatility and how we can set up these ROVs to cater to different teams. 
We have battery and direct power options available, a suite of different multi-beam imaging sonars, as well as different positioning systems and levels of autonomy to suit every person's need. Each of these ROVs can have the same cameras, the same sonars, and many of the same sensors available for each unit. It's just that package that's driving those different tools around. So the questions you really need to ask are how deep do I need to go? What sensors do I need on board to make this mission successful? As well as the current that I'm gonna be operating in is really gonna determine which one of these ROVs is gonna be best for you. So now that you guys understand the different ROV packages we have and how they can be set up, deployed, and benefit each and every public safety diving team, we're gonna be discussing the most important attachment we can put on board our ROV systems. That's a multi-beam imaging sonar like I have on our Revolution here. A lot of the waters we're diving in when it comes to a public safety operation are very low visibility. We're talking under five feet. And despite the great color filtering our camera is able to achieve in these murky waters, finding a target with only five feet of visibility can be a significant challenge. The addition of a multi-beam imaging sonar allows us to see through that turbid water and quickly identify the targets or anomalies that were already discovered on the side scan sonar, navigate to, and get a visual or a sonar confirmation on what that target is. We're gonna be sharing a couple of different clips on different public safety operations that have found different targets over the years and share their stories on how the sonar was able to benefit the ROV operation. This first clip was actually filmed as part of a demonstration with the Delaware State Police, who has since purchased a Deep Trucker Revolution ROV. This demo was at one of their primary training locations on the Delaware River, and it posed some really unique challenges for the ROVs. It was incredibly high current, and some of the lowest visibility I've been in in quite some time. But we noticed something really exciting almost immediately upon splashing the ROV. On board the imaging sonar, we were able to see that there was a large object about 30 feet in front of us, and we wanted to inspect on what it was. Upon getting a bit of a different angle, we were able to really quickly determine that there was a car right under the pier we were standing on with a piling on either side of it. Now, this is really interesting because this is the exact location where the divers are training many times a year. Right under their very feet has been a car that's been down there since they believe about the 1990s. Using the imaging sonar on board the Revolution ROV, we were able to inspect, identify, and get better situational awareness on the vehicle, which Delaware State Police later recovered. And we're gonna share some of that footage with you now. As you can see, we've got our lower frequency mode on our sonar. So this is at 1.2 megahertz right now, and we're kind of getting a good view of the situational awareness. As you can see, we have the vehicle wedged between these two pilings here, and I'm trying to take a look and figure out a best way to get to the driver's side, and see if anyone might be in that car. Now, you can see one of the challenges and the reason the Delaware State Police likes doing training and ROV demos here is it's a very high current situation and it's very low visibility. We can barely see the end of our grabber here. So I'm gonna be using sonar most of the time. Now we're in our high frequency mode, getting a better close up view on the structure of the car and how it's wedged between these two pilings from the dock above. So I'm just taking a look at the car itself and the structure and kind of being directed by the police team here on how they might be recovering this vehicle in the near future. They did later recover the vehicle itself it ended up being a 1980s or 90s Cadillac that they think has been down there since about the time the car was new because it disintegrated pretty quickly once we got it out and onto the surface there. But in this high frequency mode, you can see the level of detail we can get even from a bit of range here and how little our camera is doing in these murky environments. So sonar becomes such a valuable tool. We've previously discussed how ROVs with sonars can enhance diving operations by monitoring divers in real time. This can be done for both training exercises as well as enhancing operational capabilities. In this next footage here, I was with a port police team out of California, and we were monitoring divers from a safe standoff distance using our Revolution ROV with an imaging sonar on board. These divers had in-helmet communications, and we were able to feed them situational awareness from the ROV and help them navigate on top of the mock recovery target very quickly and effectively. This is just one example of how ROVs, as well as human divers, can be used together to enhance operational capabilities. So in this case, this is a, a training exercise, and we have a mannequin or a recovery dummy here in the water. And we're using our Revolution ROV with sonar to monitor these divers in real time and they have in-helmet comms, so we're feeding them information on where they are relative to this recovery dummy in real time to get them right on top of that target as fast and safe as we possibly can. You can see actually even the lines going down to this mannequin, and they're right on top of that target right now. 
So they're performing the recovery, they're getting on top of the target, and we're going to just let them do that for a second. I was recently part of a boat search in Fresno, California. Before I got out with the ROVs, they'd previously done side scan sonar scans of the lake bed and identified where they believed the boat to be. Now, funnily enough, the week before, they actually had another ROV system from a neighboring organization out on the lake, and it was unable to verify and find the side scan sonar target. And a lot of that came down to the topography of the lake bed. There was a lot of big mountains and valleys at the bottom of this lake, and the boat happened to have fallen in the middle of one of these valleys. Because our ROVs have an actuated sonar system, we were able to angle the sonar further down than most other systems could, and very quickly and effectively scan this valley where they believe the boat to be. We were able to find the target in just a matter of minutes. We're approaching from the stern and we can see the motor on the back as well as the full profile of the ship. Now, one of the things the team wanted to know was what's the size of the ship. And with sonar, we have really good measuring tools. So we were able to determine that this was about 18 to 20 feet and it was obviously turned upright. So it was facing belly up in the water here. Now, if I scrub forward a few seconds here, we get a bit of a different profile. So this is approaching from the side of the vessel. And we can see on this angle each individual rib on the underside of the boat. So the level of detail we're able to get out of these sonars is pretty astounding. We can usually count the fingers on a hand from about 30 feet out, but it also goes outside of public safety as well. And we do a lot of inspections just with sonar as well. Be sure to check out some of our other content on our YouTube. But this is a pretty cool situation on where we were able to find a boat using our ROV where many other systems couldn't. Here at Deep Trekker, we make world-class ROV systems to make public safety diving operations safer. We've talked a lot about the impact it's had on the teams, some of the things that sent the Deep Trekker hardware apart. But at the core of it, the Deep Trekker difference really comes from the team we have here. We're over 110 people here in our Kitchener facility, and we build, manufacture, design, test, and program everything in-house. We put our heart and soul into what we do, and we stand by our product 100%. The thing that struck me early on was it's easy to use for our firefighters. It's also very mobile. We can either put on a boat and deliver it to an area or we can just simply carry it down to the shoreline and deploy it from that area. So it doesn't take up a lot of space. And then also the customer service with Deep Tracker, the issues we've run into, however minor they may be, have been rectified and corrected very quickly. They've been easy to get in contact with. They've also addressed any concerns or issues that we've had and, and taken care of it immediately. Here at Deep Trucker, we'd like to thank each and every public safety diving team out there. We really appreciate the work you do on making our communities and our waterways safer. We're absolutely honored to be a small part in streamlining those operations and keeping your divers out of harm's way. If you have any questions about anything we've discussed here today, please feel free to reach out. I look forward to speaking with you, answering your questions, and finding which ROV is going to be best for you. Thanks again.